So I don't know if you guys have watched yet. There is a new Stan Lee documentary that just dropped on Disney+. Plus. I saw the trailer for this. I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but the trailer looked pretty good. It got me excited to watch it. I probably will. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think to myself, this is really cool and all, but I would really like to see a Jack Kirby documentary. And apparently, I'm not the only one who thought so because we got a tweet last week from his son, Neil Kirby. Seems like he kind of wants uh, something similar as well. Yeah, it seems like uh, there's a lot of disdain over on the family side of Kirby trying to defend his legacy a bit more because for years, Stan Lee has been, quote, the man of Marvel Comics. I mean, he had Marvel on his shoulders that he uplifted in a market that was in a constant state of almost dying. And him kind of embodying that, you know, almost mascot for all the titles and being tied as a creative, um, at minimum, inspiration to all these characters, or at least many of the characters we'll get into it, is largely why we have comic books to this day and why he's getting a documentary. Unfortunately, there's a lot of creators that didn't get the type of credit that they deserved, but this started a long time ago, and I wanted to bring this conversation not just to the comic fan, but here as well at the table, because I think there is an aspect of understanding the creative, what goes into this hobby and industry that we all love, that has largely gone unspoken about for far too long. And it still affects the market to this very day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's an interesting conversation. We hear it all the time. I don't think this is ever going to get any resolution to it. You know, it's a, this disconnect. Um, there's a strong group of people in this hobby who feel like, you know, Jack Kirby has maybe been ripped off and Stanley has stolen, taken all the credit and glory. Okay. And it's been a long history between those two. I mean, we're talking back to when Marvel was timely, you know, back in the forties here. All right. They've worked together. And I think some of that history between them has shifted between both of them, especially Jack. You know, Jack did so much. I mean, he is Jack the King Kirby. So we're talking about Awesome Lee, whatever. We're also talking King Kirby. He, he has his own title, all right? A lot of people respect him. Now, the problem, I believe, mostly um, becomes in this current age. Unfortunately, Jack passed in 1994. I mean, come on. The glory days of comics, of all that he's put into it, unfortunately have come post-mortem for him. And that's, it's, that sucks. And now you have the family members trying to battle for his memory, both whether it be for financial gain, whether it be a combination of just uh, emotional. Um, because, I mean, Jack's son, Neil, the specific one, I think he's had four kids. Okay, I think he's in his 70s. So he has seen Jack go through the tumultuous relationship of his rise and being pushed around and Jack never getting probably the dues that he probably should have received for as much as he's contributed, but he has not forgotten. Everyone remembers. So he just needs, I, I, I feel like blaming Lee is not the way to go. Well, this is the quote from Neil Kirby that I wanted to bring. We have a couple of them this show, but this kind of like plays to, to what you're describing here. Because we all know what Stan did. You know, he was the person on camera. He was the person talking to groups, going to conventions, and he was the hype man. You know, he was doing everything, keeping comics alive, doing what he could, right? Um, this is a quote from the Neil Kirby tweet. My father worked at home in his Long Island basement studio we referred to as, quote, the dungeon, usually 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Most of the artists, writers, inkers, etc., worked at home, not in the Marvel offices as depicted in the program. Through middle and high school, I was able to stand at my father's left shoulder, peer through a cloud of cigar smoke, and witness the Marvel universe being created. I am by no means a comic historian, but there are few, if any, that have personally seen or experienced what I have and know the truth with firsthand knowledge. 14 plus hours a day in, quote, the dungeon. And that right there is what it took the King Kirby to come up with all the things that he was able to do to build the Marvel Universe. You know, it took this 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 crazy amount of effort and, and painstaking work, uh, very, very professional and, and diligent and someone who like woke up with the urge to draw and draw and draw and never stop. And he never did. Right. I mean, until, until the 80s. And I think that 
the difference between Jack and Stan was just that. The only way that Jack would have been able to get this information out were to have more people know what he was going through to create the Marvel Universe, at least to have his, his major part of it. And when you fast forward to the internet age, you know, where we are now, it's that type of communication that doesn't even happen enough to this day that prevent creators from getting their dues as much. But all the while, Stan was in the spotlight because that's what comics needed at the time. So I agree with you. Is there some, you know, differences here? Absolutely. And should Jack get more credit? Absolutely. But should Stan get less credit? I think not. I think that his ego that was demonized in Neil's quote in his tweet is something that kept comics alive for a long time. He had to be that suave writer. He had to be that cool cat, you know, because we're talking about funny books, dude. It's for kids, you know. He was kind of embarrassed at the beginning. He wanted to write, like, books and was able to create so much and have, you know, so many ties to other works that it uplifted Marvel as, as, a, as a medium for comics for such a long time. But I do think that there, it's, not, it's not about Stan getting less credit. It's about the other creators getting more credit. And without more speaking about what they went through and what they did to be able to get to this point, especially since so many of them have passed, I mean, we're going to still see this type of disdain, and it's never going to stop. I think part of it you got to consider, too, the, uh, the Marvel method, right? The way they created comics back then in the first place, where the, uh, the writer did some work, but the artist uh, did a lot more of the heavy lifting than I think a lot of comic artists do today, where they are actually structuring and contributing dialogue and story developments. And when you consider that when they created Spider-Man, Stanley was just like, let's make a guy named Spider-Man. And then Steve Ditko kind of comes in and makes him this weird guy in this full body suit who can stick to walls and design so much of the, you know, you know, the lasting important elements of the character. It does raise the question, you know, how much do you give credit to each person for their individual contributions to the whole? Yeah. I mean, I look at it like this for me. Okay. Um, I don't think it's one or the other. I don't think you get to the point that um, Marvel's gotten to with just, one artist, okay, or just one writer. You know, I look at it as, let's just say, let's look at it as this is a metaphor. There's a balloon, a deflated balloon on a table. And there's all kinds of great balloons, right? There's beautiful shiny ones and all that. But that balloon is laying there, sitting there, all right? Now, what makes that balloon exciting? Filling it with air and getting it to float, all right? So you have the, this, this flat thing on the table, so you have this art, Right, but it needs something. It needs the story before it to really soar. Right. So do you love a character's design? Is that what's gonna get you to buy a book or is it gonna be the story? It's gonna be the story and the character together, right? So for when I look at it, I see Jack Kirby who is the artist, and I see Stanley, and we know he's a storyteller. You can tell the guy has told stories his entire life. He's been there since nineteen forty two, I believe. All right, to the very end. All right, Jack didn't do that. Steve Ditko didn't do that. I don't know if anyone's done that. All right, so he has earned his echelon in my eyes. Well, now, could he have taken more credit? Sure. But like I said, Jack Kirby was known, according to Lee, Lee even said it, that he drew out the panels and then filled in the text to go with the excitement of it. It's a collaboration of the two. It's not one or the other. Raise them both up. Raise everybody up to a high level. When it comes down to it, though, the main frustration in this tweet and really amongst many comic fans is that over the course of Stanley's career, he's taken hard ownership of the creations. This is a quote in regards to Spider-Man. It was my idea, therefore, I created the character. Done. That's it. It was my idea. I created it. You know, rights are involved. He always watched what he said. You can go and listen to some interviews, especially ones where he um, was on the phone. There's a really interesting one with Jack Kirby calling in and Stan being on the phone. It kind of surprised uh, Jack with having Stan there. And they communicated, and you can tell that Jack was definitely a bit more standoffish and not in a position to really speak his truth, but you can tell he was holding back. And, and it's that type of thing where it's like on another end, having someone be – Let's say the hype man or, or the, uh, the, final, you know, the, the final person to, to, to add those 
bits of excitement in the writing that actually made it good, regardless of what we can attribute Stan to do. Knowing that Jack was largely, uh, I would imagine, an introverted person, you know, someone who, who sits in the, in the dungeon for 12, 18 hours a day. Like, this is someone who doesn't have the same type of people skills, at the very least, that we can say as Stan Lee. And that timid nature, typically in a professional work environment, prevents people from achieving some of the recognition that others do. Doesn't make it right, though. And it's that frustrating feeling that you get that I want to like circle back to what modern comics are experiencing right now. I can compare this with uh, this wave of AI art that has infiltrated the comic variant market talk about it in length with people. I can also compare it to this wave of just digital art that kind of just appeared and became a mainstay. Yo, someone paid money for a Gabriel Del Auto piece that took them over four days of paint and, and, and redoing and, and, and uh, practice in 20 years of like, you know, being a freaking perfectionist and a master of the craft that is uh, of that, that, that causes other artists we respect to awe whenever he hits that that page, just like a Mac Mignola at a at a class session when he's teaching people how to do negative space, versus an artist who just does the line work in digital and then pays an inker and pays a colorist, and then both variants are worth the same amount. Like these are things that I think about, and I I think I want to bring this back to the table to discuss more in length because these are great conversations. Because long term, I think a big part of this industry is about telling the story about how these things get created. You know, a movie, to your point, is only as successful as the marketing. And when that movie does an amazing job because they fired on all cylinders, it wasn't just the acting, but it was also because, hey, they made a really great trailer. Well, well now you have success. When you talk about movies too, though, like most creative artistic efforts are group efforts or team-based things. So it's, a, it's an easier narrative to kind of pin it all on one person, like to say, Stan Lee is Fantastic Four, or to say, like, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, for example. You know, you, you got a movie, and you got one guy in charge who, who's in charge of like, creative visioning the whole thing, but then you've also got to consider all of the individual actors' performances, and you got to consider the guy who holds the mic over th over overhead, and the guy who wrote the screenplay, and the sound mixing, and all, all the little tiny bits that go in there, or think about every band you've ever liked, you know, and how most people can name the lead singer of every band, but who knows every drummer and every bassist of every band who are just as important to the overall sound, but don't necessarily get the same amount of love because they're not the hype man at front. Inkers, pencilers, writers, editors, cover artists. The person who does the word balloons, you know? Like, all together, these things combine, and they're just narratives. These, these individuals who are professionals at their, ta at their craft, their stories aren't being told enough. And it makes sense why they're not being told enough because, hey, you have to like put yourself out there and this is a medium where largely if you do it well, you don't actually have to. But I think now is the time that we need to start recognizing these individuals because that's what's going to prevent there being another Kirby long term. And just really quick, just to follow up here, we got to look back at the history of comics. I mean, they've been around for let's almost say 80 years plus. And so a lot of memories of who did what is also can be lost in time. But the value of comics weren't what we think they are now, okay? They were just throwaways. The, the importance of Captain America to us now is huge, but back then it just wasn't. So the understanding of copyright and ownership, there was a lot of naivete at that time. It just wasn't what, we th what they thought, what it is now. People are so much smarter. Artists get it. They need to own the IP. They didn't then, so the companies took it over, and it's just kind of, unfortunately, the people that we love the most that we've lost in time got cheated. And you'll see that same thing with athletes who started these sports. I mean, how much did they really get paid to now the $100 million contracts you're seeing with basketball players and all kinds of athletes? Um, they started it. They will always be legendary. And these families do, I feel, are owed more than what they get. So hopefully with conversations like this, um, it'll bring more attention and awareness. So let's raise everybody. Let's not knock people down to get to to a lower bar. I want to see a Jack Kirby documentary. Damn it! And Stanley's dead. He didn't even do this documentary. That's so true. let's let's like not blame him also for doing something and putting something out and okaying this. 
Let us know what you think about this topic in the comment section below. And while you're at it, we may feature your comment if you let me know what you think about digital art. What do you think about artists who um, also break up the workload to another inker or another colorist? Um, we got to do a whole show on that at some point. And yeah, I'm sure if you leave some kind of interesting comment down below, we will definitely scoop it up and throw it on screen and discuss at a future date.